So I was chilling out, Max, relaxing all cool, shooting some b-ball outside of the school when I had to go to the bathroom. So, at the time, my phone was in my pocket, in my sweater. Thought, no problem. Well, unfortunately, if you have a pocket that's more lateral than it is non-lateral, and you turn very quickly, you can run into some problems. Uh, so, about a week or so ago, I had a, an incident with a suicidal telephone. Oh, no. You would think that would mean you're screwed and you pretty much have to buy a new phone. But, uh, actually, well, at least in this case, that's not true. It lives. Yes. I don't know if phones can eat brains, but uh, if they could, I have a strong suspicion that my phone would be in the category of brain-eating phones, if they had mouths. So, you might wonder, how did I do it? Well, first, of course, you take the phone out of the water. You get the water out of the phone. And then you put it in a cave for three days and put a boulder in front. And then wait until someone else pushes the boulder out of the way. Um, so, in this cave, I put uh, a bag of rice. And all I did was just shove the phone in the rice. Literally. You put the lime in the coconut. Which might sound mostly retarded, but it's not full retarded, because if the rice isn't cooked, for some reason this means that it will actually take out moisture. So I did that three days, took it out, I didn't see any moisture, turned it on, and it worked. Unfortunately, that's not it for today. I also have some cell phone mock-ups to show you to uh, kind of give a, a feel of all the different types of cell phones that they have here and some of the uh, functions that they have that might not be on any of the phones you have in your area. Uh, I was able to get these mock-ups because they do things a little bit differently here, or at least I think they do because I've never seen this anywhere else. Um, so when the new models come out, they have to get rid of the old ones, and uh, what they do is they will give or sell for very cheap the old mock-ups. So you can get this, which is not real, for less than a dollar. Up first, my phone. I still have pretty cut on the back. Although they look kind of... Just not... Not feeling it. Up first... Up first, my old phone. But pretty good at it. So, standard buttons and everything. But... On this side, you have a proprietary headphone jack. All three companies do this. It looks about the same, but you can't connect an adapter from one company to another company, of course. Yeah. Kind of a pain, but the adapters are pretty cheap. They run about maybe two, three dollars, so it's not that bad, but I don't know why they just don't put a regular headphone jack on. Next, in the inside, you can see this little thing right here. This little guy is a camera. Has two cameras, much like the new DS has two cameras. And the functionality is pretty much for the same reason. You want to take a picture of yourself 
or if you want to do conferencing on your phone, which I'm guessing no one really does, but if you want to, hey, there you go. So this phone's a little bit different. It looks the same at first when you open it and close it, but the hinge is only on one side, not on this side, because you can open it like this, lay it on the table, and watch TV, because it has an antenna, which is kind of rare these days, but the antenna is for something different. This antenna is for television. So if you wanted to, if you have a phone in Japan, or maybe a couple other countries, you can watch television on your phone. Although flip phones are really popular in Japan, they also have sliding phones here as well. So this one slides up and down, but of course they have phones that slide this way too. So if you want that type of phone, maybe if you want a full keyboard and you want to hide it sometimes, there you go. Uh, this phone also has an antenna as well, but just like the last one, this antenna is for TV. In terms of popularity, flip phones are definitely the most popular here. Uh, either kind of like this, or a lot of times now you can flip it open like this for TV, something like that. But it's always usually that style where you open it and then you have the keypad. So there aren't any QWERTY keyboards or anything like that. So this, how they put in their characters is with the number pad. And what they do, they have a set of characters for each number. So for example, if you press the first key, you get A. Ah. However, if you press the key twice, you get the next character, E. And you can do this for any of the keys. And it works pretty well, especially because the predictive text system on all Japanese phones works very, very well. Much, much better than any phone that has a predictive text system for English. Uh, so that works pretty well, but on the iPhone in particular, there is a faster way which <coughs> works really, really well. And if you have an iPhone and you haven't noticed this, then you might be surprised about this. This is, only works on the keypad, not the QWERTY. So what you do, you put your finger on it, if you hold it, it gives you all the choices. Which, you might think that's not very useful because you have to hold it down, but what you can do is you can flick. So instead of going and holding it down and doing that, you can just go flick down, flick down. And it will pop up. And because of this, you can type much, much faster than you could on pretty much any other phone in the entire country. So if you like to join the uh, religion of my resurrected cell phone, go ahead, we're accepting members.